What's up, Facebook Live? This is your girl, Marky Lemon Drow, social media speaker and Facebook Live host. And today I have a guru with me who is going to discuss land trust. Make sure you type in all your questions below. Tell them who you are. Hey guys, I'm Julia. Uh, I am Trust Counsel and Assistant VP for Chicago Title Land Trust Company. I deal with all thing land trust related. Um, so any questions, comments, concerns regarding land trust, what they are, which I'm sure everybody wants to know, um, they come through me. Woo, now you saved me a boatload of money, but we're not going to talk about how much money you saved me. Please tell everyone what is a land trust trust so usually when i ask people you know if they know what a land trust is their eyes kind of glaze over they drool you know maybe a little bit because uh land trusts sound complicated they sound expensive it sounds like we've been doing real estate for 30 years without them so if it's not broke why fix it hmm but the thing is that it is broke so basically what a land trust is it's a private way of holding title to your real estate okay what most home buyers don't know what most realtors don't know and quite frankly, a ton of real estate attorneys don't know, is that uh, you know when you buy real estate, all the details of your transaction become a matter of public record. Mm -hmm. So you know we have the deed at the end of that real estate transaction. You got the deed. You got the deed. And the deed holds a lot of intimate information about that transaction. So the home buyer's name, their address, purchase price of the property, right? Uh, mortgage information. And then that deed gets recorded in whatever county that transaction takes place. And anybody with an iPhone, a tablet, a computer, any kind of phone can access that information because websites that we use every single day, like Google, Zillow, Trulia, Facebook, LinkedIn, pull that information and make it accessible. You know what? Now, at first I had only one story I was going to tell, but as soon as you start talking, I was instantly hit with multiple stories. And so I'm going to weave some of these stories Perfect. in throughout the process. The first one was probably about 12 years ago, I represented a married gentleman mm -hmm. who wanted to have a love den, or mm -hmm. I call it his dip spot. Yep. So he purchased a studio condo, unbeknownst to his wife, because he did not buy it as owner occupied. He purchased it as an investment property. Yep. So the spouse did not have to come and wave homestead. Yep. And the wife didn't know about the property for years. Now, what I told him was when he bought it, because I knew he was married, I said, you might want to buy and trust if this is a true secret. He didn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. And so fast forward years, she finds out about the place. And now all of a sudden he wants to put it in land trust. I said, well, she already knows about the place. And so she has the address. She knows everything about it because it's public information. information. Yeah. Um, and not that I'm encouraging anyone to go and use a land trust because you bang you a dip spot. But, but hey, do you? <laughs> Judgment free zone. I don't know your life. Do you? Now, you've shared um, a couple of times a story about a judge mm -hmm. and protections for them. Could you please convey that to the audience? Yeah. So there's a judge. Uh, her name is Judge Lepkow, which is a federal judge here in Chicago. She was the Dirksen Building. Uh, downtown and about 10 years ago she issued a ruling to a defendant and surprise surprise the defendant wasn't happy with the ruling that she issued oh. um, so the defendant googled her name and because she did close into a land trust all her information were a matter of public record so he found her home address and he went there and she wasn't home but her husband was and her mother was and he killed them so the judge lost her spouse and her mother because someone was able to find her home address but had she purchased in a land trust that information would not have been public information absolutely and so you know oftentimes people think like well that'll never happen to me right it's a lifetime that's a lifetime movie that's not real life and i mean i'm here to tell you that it is real life i mean it, ha it just recently happened to me to be honest last oh. year my company was sued and uh, a judgment was entered in our favor versus mm -hmm. the plaintiff's. And the plaintiff lost his damn mind. And so I come into work, and my boss is like, I need you to come and set up the conference room. So one of two things is happening. I'm either getting fired or I'm getting a raise, right? <laughs> one of two, right. <laughs> one of two, right? So 
I brace myself. I walk into the office and, you know, I say, am I getting fired? Am I getting a raise? He's like, you're not getting fired. And I'm like, I'm getting a raise. Like, not getting a raise. I'm like, all right. So what ended up happening is that this gentleman, that gentleman, I use that term loosely, uh, actually filed a death threat against me and my boss because we're so accessible, right? I'm all over social media representing the company, all over the website. And so anyone that he found close to the company, he filed a death. Uh, he gave right. a death. Like, yeah, he threatened. Wow. And so, you know, I left being a state's attorney in the criminal area of law and came into real estate thinking it was a calmer. Or, that was a mistake. <laughs> that is not true. You guys are savages. <laughs> all of you. Beast. Beast. For real. Um, you know, and here I'm, and then I'm Atlanta thinking this is like the safest ever. And it, it's not. The point is that you never know when someone's going to snap, right? Yeah. So even with realtors, um, you know, if you are representing a client, that property's not selling quickly enough. They're paying two mortgages. They brought another property or whatever. The stress of life wears on people. Yeah. And sometimes people end up doing things that in their right mind, they wouldn't have ever even thought of. So there, you know, you don't need to be just a judge or an attorney to want to or need to have privacy, right? Give me a profession and I'll give you a reason. Are you a school teacher, <laughs> right? Have you given out a detention to a student or given, you know, an A student a C? These kids are crazy. Well, right? the parents are crazy. And the parents are the, crazy. The parents are crazy. I had a realtor come up to me during a presentation and say, um, one of my students from Chicago Public School District, one of my students scratched up my car, keyed my car. And now I'm suing him and his him and his parents in civil court for damages to my car. But I'm buying a piece of real estate. I don't want these people knowing where I live. What do I do? Put in a trust. You close into a land trust. So the second story that comes to mind is that my mother bought a piece of property when I was probably about 13, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And the property was not in her name. It was in my grandfather's name. So my mother had the property put into a irrevocable trust. Mm -hmm. And fast forward a few 10 years later, my grandfather has stated he's going to sell me the property. Mm -hmm. But he could not sell me the property without my mother's written permission because of the irrevocable land trust. Mm -hmm. The reason this came about is because another relative threatened my mother that the property would be hers. Mm -hmm. And my mother laughed and said, Absolutely you not. never sell that property without my permission. And my mother had layers to her land trust. Yep. Like first it went to me, after me it went to her mother, after her mother it went to her sister. Yep. I mean, she had like layers to it. And my mother was like, y'all will never make a move on this here building now without, without me. me. And so could you speak more to uh, some of those protections, I guess, after the fact? Absolutely. So what, one of the biggest is what you've named, you know, and that's when you have a partnership with someone, if you're a group of investors, right? And you want to make sure that one of these partners after selling that real estate doesn't run off with that check. You know, we, the way that a trust is set up, we monitor who gets the proceeds and how they get them. So if you want to make sure that you're getting your fair share, you know, and you're the one making the decisions or however you set up the trust, that's how we handle your real estate. Um, you know, and a lot of people will actually say, no, I don't want a land trust because I don't want to give up legal rights and control to my property because on the deed, it's not your name. It's a Chicago title land trust number one, two, three, four, five. That being said, though, there's two documents in a land trust. Okay. There's the deed mm -hmm. and then there's a trust agreement. All right. The trust agreement is what governs the trust and says who has legal rights and control and say so regarding that real estate. That trust agreement is not recorded, so it's not a public document, but it is at our office and, you know, whoever owns a trust can get a copy at any time. And so we actually have no legal rights to that real estate. You do. You retain all legal rights and control to that real estate. And we can't do anything to that real estate without your say-so. So, you know, you sell it and Mark, he's supposed to get 50% and Julia's supposed to get 50%. Mark, he's not getting 100%. And I don't care how big of a temper tantrum she <laughs> Oh, she can act a fool. Oh, I know she can. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. How much does this cost? Because it sounds, um, it, one, expensive. it involves an attorney yep. and it sounds expensive. Yep. So how much does it cost to protect yourself at this level? A million dollars. <sighs> no, I'm just playing. Um, the prices vary. Okay. The price is very based on the market value of the property. So, for example, if the property is $500,000 or below and it's your primary residence, 
200 bucks to set up the trust, $99 a year to maintain it. Okay. So based on what you are getting mm -hmm. from the trust, which is privacy protection, physical protection, asset and liability protection, and estate planning, you're paying $99 a year. $99 a year. And quite frankly, I spend more on Starbucks every month. And all I get is a little caffeine high for about an hour. <laughs> Than, uh, than you do on a land trust. And so the other story that I wanted to tell, because you actually helped me out of this situation, last year, my mother-in-law passed away and she suffered from vascular dementia. Therefore, we could not make any changes to anything because she had vascular dementia. She had left her home and it was vacant for two years and we still paid the trust though. Mm -hmm. But you're supposed to sign it. Is it updated every 10 years? 20. Every 20 years. So my mother-in-law did not have the opportunity to update hers every 20 years because of the vascular dementia. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was we were still paying the trust. Now, this is where Facebook comes into play. I actually posted my mother-in-law's house on Facebook, and I stated that it was a broker-owned entity. I sold my mother-in-law's house via Facebook with no co-op commission to a licensed, uh, a, a realtor who's an investor. He comes over to the property. He pays me what I put it on Facebook for, plus the cost of the clean out. And we closed in 30 days. Now I came down to Chicago title mm -hmm. with the death certificate. I think it cost me about $450. Um, a young lady over there sat down with me. She prepared all of the paperwork. She told me to come back in 24 hours. I came back in 24 hours. She had the documents for me and we went and closed. There was no additional cost involved. We didn't have to go through probate. Um, we didn't have to argue, fuss or fight. All we needed was that death certificate and we were able to sell that property Absolutely. with no headaches. And it was probably the, it was one of the easiest real estate transactions because it was a cash buyer. Um, the, the property had, you know, some issues because she hadn't lived there and my husband didn't win a rise and all these sorts of different things. But the ease of dealing with Chicago title, because the property was in a land trust, I have never experienced anything so easy, especially when there is a death involved. So, and that's, you know, the whole thing with estate planning, estate planning is tough, right? Because you're dealing with the death of a loved one. So you're dealing with the emotion there. You're dealing with their property. You're dealing with, you know, family feuding and, and whatnot. And that takes a toll. It does. But what it also takes is time. And as you know, time is money, right? So probate's expensive. My probate attorney friends, hey y'all, um, I love you and I'm sorry for taking your business, but you know, <laughs> my probate friends, their retainers start at $5,000. And that's if it's a seamless transaction. And it's never a seamless transaction. So those bills go north of $10,000. And then it takes, you know, anywhere from six months to two years. And that's time where deals come through, yes. right? Cash deals. They're not going to be waiting for you for two years. No, they're not. The way that a land trust is set up is there's the trustee, which is Chicago Title Land Trust Company. There's a beneficiary of the trust, which is the current homeowner or buyer. And then the trust allows you to set up contingent beneficiaries. So if something should happen to the home buyer, the property automatically passes to whoever you name as contingent. So uh, there's no probate. There's no probate fees. There's no attorney's fees for that. The property automatically passes. Wow. Amazing. You know what? I Because I see people who lose all of the equity paying the probate. I've been to these closings before. And I mean, I'm looking at twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 bills yep. at closing that are coming out of the proceeds yep. of the sale. And families do not get along for some reason when people die. And I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never seen it work out. Let's put it that way, without additional cost to bear. Absolutely. And my experience, just from personal experience with the property in the irrevocable land trust, with my mother-in-law passing away, they were just very smooth. And here's what's kind of unique about my mother-in-law situation. Um, she bought the property with 
uh, my father-in-law, who was not my husband's biological father, but his adopted father. Okay. And he had two older children mm-hmm. prior to marrying my mother-in-law. But what they wanted to ensure was that Stephen would benefit solely from the real estate. Yep. Had that property not been in a trust, yep. those siblings would have had access to it. Absolutely. Who he had not laid eyes on and God knows, and God how, knows long, how long, it could have presented an issue. And so we're talking about overall protection of your real estate assets. And so I work super hard for my assets. I'm assuming you do too. <laughs> we all know Marky Hustle. So, you know, we work hard for our assets. I want my things to go to who I want them to go to. Oftentimes the state of Illinois make the decision for us. And oftentimes it's not the decision we would have made for ourselves. No, it's not. And so, you know, in instances where you have family members who are maybe drug addicts or alcoholics, gamblers, right? And you don't want your assets to go to them because you know that they're, they're going to be gambled away or they're going to be sold off for drugs or alcohol or whatever they may be sold off for. And so you don't want that person to get those things. You want your next door neighbor to have them or you want Marquis to get them or you want me to get them. I'll happily take them. Um, and the beautiful thing about it is that trust agreements are not recorded documents. They're not a matter of public record. Hmm. So you, no one will be able to know. Oh, so they can get mad after the fact that after you're gone. Fact, but that, that doesn't matter at that point. It doesn't matter at that point. Make a man work. Absolutely. That's my mama house. Uh, now, now, according to this document, Mr. Jones, the man who always cut the grass yep. and water, did he check in on us? He owned it. He owns it. He oh, owns yeah. it. And at Ooh. that point, what are you going to do? He can't nothing. do nothing. So nothing. if you all have any questions, type the questions in below. Now, if someone wanted because we have uh, real estate professionals out here, yeah. we have lenders out here, yeah. we have individuals right, right out here. How would they work with you or Chicago Title in order to set up a trust for their potential purchase? Yep. Or maybe even they just want to set a trust up regardless. Sure. What would so they do? It's two. That, that's two different transactions, right? Okay. So if you're representing a home buyer, you are a home buyer. It's important to have that conversation with your client at the very beginning of the transaction. Ask your client, you know, did you know that your information becomes a matter of public record? And if you didn't know and now you do, do you care? Do you have a privacy concern? (laughs) Okay. Right? Because some people will flat out say, I don't care. Cool. Some people be like, I'm getting divorced. My husband's abusive. I'm trying to get away from him. Yeah, I have a privacy concern. And you would have never known that unless you asked, right? So you as the realtor, you as the real estate attorney are now a superhero because you're about to help these people with a problem they didn't even know they had, right? Because you have a solution to their privacy concern. That solution is a land trust. So you offer them the land trust and they say, yeah, I'm with it. I want it. So you shoot me a quick email and you say, hey, Julia, I'm about to put in some offers for a client on some real estate. Can you shoot me over some land trust numbers? I will respond back to you with a land trust number or 10 numbers or 20 numbers, however many numbers you want. The beautiful thing about putting in offers with land trust numbers is it's free. Okay. So we don't actually charge you until a piece of real estate enters into a land trust. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So if you call me, you say I'm putting in offers and I shoot you some numbers and you put in an offer and that offer is not accepted. No problem. Use that number. Make another offer. You're putting in 30 offers at a time. God bless you. I appreciate your real estate hustle. We're still not charging you at that time. Now, this is what I would say. Keep this in mind because I know that a lot of real estate professionals do not know this. When you are submitting an offer on behalf of your buyer client as the buyer's agent, the seller does not have to keep that offer confidential because they are a party to the transaction. So not only would you want to have a trust number, you need to send over a confidentiality agreement before you submit the offer. If not, the seller has the right to disclose the terms and whoever is buying the property. Mm -hmm. So you want a confidentiality agreement before you submit the offer. And you also want to have your trust number that didn't cost you a penny if you really wanted to remain confidential. And especially for your clients that have a lot of assets, you want to make sure that they have fair bargaining power, right? Mm -hmm. So for instance, when Walt Disney was buying Disneyland, 
he was buying up all the real estate there. He made every single offer for that real estate in the land trust number. Why? Because of Julia selling her piece of real estate, right? Here comes Walt. And Walt says, Julia, where your house is where the Tower of Terror is going to go. And I'm going to give you a million bucks for that. Walt is worth billions, right? And there is no Disneyland without a Tower of Terror. <laughs> so if I would have accepted one million, now I want five. Mm -hmm. you know because what? I know who yeah. the buyer is. So the more you're worth, essentially, the, the more likely you should have a land trust because people can also research any and everything about Absolutely. you. They know about that promotion. They Absolutely. Googled you on Facebook. Oh, they've Googled you on Google and Facebooked you on Facebook. And you know we share everything on Facebook, yes. which is great. Keep doing you, right? <laughs> but um, the more public you make yourself, the bigger target you are. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, so I give you the land trust number, you make the offer in the number, your offer gets accepted, I sign the contract for you. Your signature doesn't even go on the contract, I sign it for you. Well, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because a contract can be used in discovery in any type of litigation. Anything used in discovery becomes a matter of public record. So if you don't want your name hitting public record, we take care of all of that for you. You know what? Now I've seen your presentation a couple of times and I need to pay closer attention <laughs> because I've learned two new things today. See? So I probably need to see it at least five more I times. I got you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Now, what if I already own the property and let's say I'm refinancing or I just want to set up a trust? Yep. So real quick, just going back to the putting in an offer and signing the contract, make sure that if you're getting financing, you tell your lender that you are closing in a land trust early in the transaction for two reasons. First and foremost, you want to make sure that your lender allows you to close into a land trust. Okay. Most lenders will. Okay. Uh, they've changed their minds in the past three to four years because clients are now demanding privacy. Um, if your lender will not have them call me, most, some, excuse me, loan officers have, have no idea what a land trust is. Okay. And it's easier to say I don't, that we don't do it versus saying, let me research it. I don't know, right? Because nobody <laughs> wants to look stupid in front of their clients, including me, right? Oh. So I'm happy to handhold any lenders, uh, you know, through the process. If that lender stands firm and says, Julia, oh, and says, Julia, we're not closing into land trust. Your client has two options. I have a whole list of lenders that will close into land trust and will make the transaction very seamless for you. So you're welcome to switch lenders or you close in your name and then you quick claim the property into a trust. So if you already own the real estate, mm -hmm. is it worth it to put the property in a land trust? It's a question I get asked all the time. Oh, for especially for estate planning, like my mother-in-law's property was not in a land trust at the time that they acquired the property. Mm -hmm. They put the property in a land trust after Carl adopted Steve. Yep. And so it 100, well, I'm answering the question. Yeah, you, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying from an estate planning aspect most definitely even though people will already you'll uh, publicly be known as the owner exactly so at this point in the transaction i kind of call i call land trust bulletproof vests hmm. they're not going to save your life but they're going to offer you an extra layer of protection okay and here's why when you quick claim the property from yourself to the trust most people in the world are not in the real estate game they have no idea what a quick claim deed is right. so they're going to think that you've sold the property from yourself to whoever is in the land trust the 20% of us that are in the real estate game, it pains me to say that 10% of us still have no idea what a quick claim deed is. No. Uh -uh. Right? Yeah. And so 90% of the world still doesn't know that you are still the owner of the property. Of the property yeah. Right? So from the privacy side, is it as good as closing directly into the trust? No, it's not. Because your name's already hit public record. And unfortunately, I can't scrub the internet. There are companies that do that. I don't work for them. Uh, but there, there are companies out there that will do that. From the estate planning end, it's just as beneficial because the you know even though you currently already own the property in your name, you still become the beneficiary of the trust. You still name contingent beneficiaries, and that property will automatically pass to whoever you name as contingent. You know when something, if something, God forbid, happens to you. That being said, you can name as many contingents as you want. So it doesn't have to be one. You, if you have you know 15 children, no problem. Name 15. <laughs> fun making them, not fun taking care of them, but I got you. Uh -oh. Perfect, perfect. perfect. <laughs> no, perfect practice. <laughs> perfect. We just want it good off the bat. Right, 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 right. 
right? See, we have fun. We have fun all the time. You have oh, to. Lord. You have to. Ah, okay. So you, I could fit. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, I got that. Yeah. So as many, whoever, whoever it is that you want, whoever it is that you want. You know, if you have grandchildren, you have four grandchildren, and you want Marquis to have fifty percent, you want the other three to have, you know, however twenty percent. That's fine. Split it up however you want. And so, you know, oftentimes people don't need a sophisticated estate plan. Oftentimes, the biggest asset that they have is their real estate. They have a car and they have a bank account. So they don't necessarily need a living trust because they don't really have anything to be putting into it, right? Mm -hmm. So write down in a beneficiary for your bank account, write down a bank of fish, uh, a beneficiary for your car note, and then put your real estate into a land trust, name your contingent, and your estate planning is taken care of. Hmm. Wow. Life just got easier. Well, I know in my situation, it made life a lot definitely easier. And just the mere fact that one, I didn't have to pay any co-op on commission. Um, you know, the 400 and I'm, I'm saying 450 ish, it could have been a little less that we were able to come over there and get everything that we needed in 24 hours was just to me amazing. Yeah. Um, and so all of my experiences with one have been positive experiences that have saved a lot of time, energy and money. So now I know that I, uh, put you in this, uh, Facebook live. Mm hmm. Are people to message you on Facebook or how would you want them to reach out to you? You know, they could shoot me an email. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Julia, J-U-L-I-A dot my last name measure, M-E-Z-H-E-R at C-T-T dot com. If you want to shoot me a message um, here on Facebook, that's fine too. I live and breathe land trust, which is awesome for you guys. Not so great for my dating life, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> It's going to get better. Um, but yeah, reach out to me anyway. Um, you know, I'm happy to answer any land trust questions that you guys may have, comments, concerns. Um, questions are always welcomed. Not a problem. So what I'm going to do is, because you gave me permission, I am going to put your email address once I come Please. back and repost so that you feel free to reach out. Also, I know that you happen to also do seminars. So my Chicago realtors yep. who are looking to work with a title company, you can also reach out in order to educate your buying population about the value of a land trust. And I actually met you at a seminar. And as I told you, I learned two new things today. And I swear I've been taking notes the whole time. Um, but now it's becoming clearer and clearer the value, plus living in an experience in it myself. Absolutely. And, you know, as professionals, right? So just for our own personal use, land trusts are important for the reasons that we talked about. But as a professional, as a real estate professional, there has to be a way that we market ourselves better than the person next to us, right? So there's a lot of us. Yes. That do the same exact thing for give or take the same exact price. Yes. And besides being cute, there has to be another reason why clients come to you. I mean, this phase <laughs> doesn't work for everybody, no, right? It doesn't. <laughs> it's okay, though. See, Marky's blessed with being cute. We don't all have that. We don't all have that. So, on camera. Okay, we good. We good. So um, there has to be a way that you stand apart and that clients come to you versus the realtor next to you or the real estate attorney next to you or the lender next to you, right? And I find that, you know, the bottle of wine we give at the end of the real estate transaction, that's clutch, so don't stop doing that, right? <laughs> or the pizza that you send or whatever, that, those are beautiful things. But what our clients really are looking for is they're looking for education. They're looking for something that you can educate them on that the realtor next to them can't. And so if you're able to look out for their privacy concerns, for their safety, for the safety of their children, for their estate planning concerns, and for providing them with asset and liability protection, and you talked all about that to them, but the guy next door didn't, of course they're coming back to you. Of course they're coming back to you. And when their mother asks for a referral, of course they're pointing at you. And when their next door neighbor asks, who did you use? And when their best girlfriend over brunch said, so who helped you out? They're looking at you. So we need to be offering value and so that's why as a realtor or a real estate professional, it's important to have as many tools in your toolbox to be assisting your clients and making all the best decisions for them so that you can get the most value out of your client. I agree 100%. People want to do business with people who they believe are thought 
leaders. And the way that I look at it is I always surround myself with people who are smarter than me. I want to be the dumbest person in the room because I'm going to walk away with something new that will enhance my life, but also anyone that I come in contact with. Absolutely. So if you're the smartest person in the room, you are in the wrong room. My mother said it means nothing to be the smartest of the dummies. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> well, That's you, so true. I thank you for taking the time out. I know that you taught continuing legal education today I on did. land trust. So you are the teacher of the attorneys, which I is am. a great thing. Um, and that you would come and share time with my audience. Thank you for having me. Uh, because my goal is to educate them on every aspect of Absolutely. real estate and to not be, t- you know, a lot of people, they like um, the whole get rich quick and cutting corners. That is not reality. Okay. And it will come back to bite you in every the time. Real estate is your biggest asset. And if it's not, I'm going to question your assets. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to question your assets. Um, and so if you need help with land trust, you're going to reach out to my girl, Jules, right, Julia? And she is going to help you. I am going to make sure that all of her contact information that she said that you could have is available. And definitely you want to get educated, but you also want to educate those who you are serving. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. See you guys later. Bye, guys. Take your questions below, and I'm going to tag Jules in them so that she can answer any questions that you have. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.